It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. It's so amazing to me that kids who have such a strong desire for independence still crave closeness. Yeah, yeah. In our downsize. <laughs> We've listened because <laughs> there's only three bedrooms and they're close together. <laughs> And now here's the stars of our show, my mum and dad. It's Friday. We love Fridays. Hello, this is Dr. Justin Coulson, the author of six books about making families happier and the parenting expert and co-host of Channel Lines Parental Guidance, season two, back a little later this year. Very excited about that. Uh, I'm here with Kylie, my wife, podcast pro partner and mum to our six kids. And Kylie, today, as we do every single Friday, it's I'll Do Better Tomorrow. We're, uh, we're, we're recording this podcast from yet another Airbnb. Last week, we moved out of our house. The furniture van took all of our gear away and we're kind of living out of suitcases and living from one Airbnb to the next until we finally move into our new house on the coast. It's uh, been a five-month saga. And I'll Do Better Tomorrow is about how we navigate the sagas and the challenges and the adversities of life, uh, whether you're moving house or not, you have them. Uh, and so we, uh, we thought that today we would share some of the latest bits and pieces that we've learned as we're trying to be intentional parents and guide our children successfully through the ups and downs of life. Kylie, why don't you go first today? Well, my story's a little bit messy. I'm not going to uh, profess to having done a perfect job at this, but it's real life. Yeah. We, uh, a couple of weeks ago, decided to get the kids kitted out with some wetsuits. We're going to be living near the beach and it's starting to get a little bit cooler, but they're really excited because we're finally going to have a house and um, and they're really looking forward to learning how to surf. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're into me all the time. Yeah. Want to ride that foamy? <laughs> Got to learn to stand up. So we went along to the surf shop and we had been looking for swimmers. Um, and you had gone down to the wetsuit area. I, I, I actually, I, I couldn't help myself. I wanted to buy a new surfboard and I had to check them out. And you may or may not have <laughs> yeah. added to uh, our shopping list in a significant way. Tonight, yeah. But um, meantime, you did a little bit of a background check and had worked out which, the, which wetsuits were going to work best for the girls. Well, by the time I got down there, Miss Eleven was having a meltdown. Mm. She was very, very distressed about the wetsuit that she'd been handed and she'd pretty much stormed off. Yeah. And I kind of looked at her and I was like, well, you know, we're about to buy you a wetsuit, but if you don't want it, that's fine. Off you go. And, and I've got to be honest, I was pretty impatient as well. Like we'd been in the shop for ages and I've given her a wetsuit. Wetsuits are expensive. It was a good wetsuit. I'd been thoughtful about it and I knew that I was picking a good one for her. And when she stormed off in a half, I was like, oh, forget it. She can, she can just go without. I'm, I'm, not even, I'm not in the headspace for this. I was not one of my better parenting moments because I just, I just shrugged my shoulders and I didn't even bother chasing her. And the reality is, as a parent, when you're doing everything you can to provide for your children and they kind of, you know, have these little meltdowns, at times it can feel like they're just being so ungrateful. Yeah, I felt like she was being entitled. I was wrong to judge her like that and I needed to make it up to it, but that's how it feels. So anyway, she sat down and she was, you know, just in such a bad mood. <laughs> and I, I sat there with her for a few minutes and I just kind of said to her, Lily, I said, I know it probably isn't like this, but right now, I said, it just feels like you're being really ungrateful. Dad's worked really hard to find the right thing for you. And she said, it didn't fit me. And I said, well, we could get another size. And she said, but I don't want that one. And I'm like, okay, so here we go with the entitlement and the, you know, the ingratitude. And, and I sat there for a bit longer and I was getting a little bit worked up. And I was like, so what is it about that wetsuit that you don't like? And she said, because I don't want bright colours. So you'd picked her this, what I thought was a really awesome wetsuit. Every piece of it was a different colour. Yeah, it was bright and, and it was fun. And as a mum, first of all, looking at my child out in the middle of the ocean, being able to spot her amongst the black seals out there. <laughs> all the black wetsuits, yeah. Um, I thought that was a really smart idea, but it was actually a really stylish looking wetsuit. Yeah. I thought. So did I. That's why I picked it. But she felt like she was standing out like a sore thumb. Yeah. 
And so she said, and I don't want one with legs and I don't want, and she kind of listed all of the things that she wanted. And I said, okay, do you think there might be a better way that you could say that? Because right now, what it feels like, like I said, you're just being really ungrateful. So is there another way that you might be able to tell me what it is that you're looking for in a wetsuit that would leave you feeling better and me being able and willing to hear you? And she kind of looked at me and she said, she said, I said, do you want a wetsuit? She said, yes. <laughs> I said, okay. So we're actually here trying to acquire a wetsuit for you. But because of your attitude, I think dad's ready to walk out the door without getting you one. And she, she said, I don't like the legs. I don't want the legs. And I just want a black one. And I said, okay, is there anything else? And she said, and I like long sleeves. And I said, okay. So by this stage, you had walked over and I said, would you like to have a big person conversation with dad and let him know what it is that you just told me? And she said, daddy, I didn't like the wetsuit you gave me because I don't want to have those legs. I just want a swimsuit style one. And I really would like to have long arms and I don't want it to be bright colors. I just want a black one. And at that point you went, oh, Easy. Okay, we <laughs> Let's can go do get that. One. Yeah, that's right. And so we went, she went along. They she make picked- it so hard, Kylie. They make it so hard. I know I'm the expert. I'm supposed to get this right all the time. I was just, oh, come on. I know, uh, but now, now, some background here as well. I hate shopping. You do hate I shopping. I hate shopping. <laughs> so, but the reality, like I said, it was messy. I, I don't mm. profess that we got it right, but mm. it just took taking a step back because – what we had in front of us looked like an entitled child who yep. was having a toddler tantrum. Yep. But what it was, was it her inability to express what she was feeling in a more appropriate way. So giving her the space that she needed to be able to do that meant that we actually had a very successful trip by the end of it and everybody walked out very happy. Except me. I walked out very poor. But you know what I love about what you did, Kylie? And this, this, this is beautiful. It's sublime. For anyone who's listening closely to the story, I hope that you picked up. What Kylie's done is moved Lily away. Well, Lily walked away, but Kylie's gone with her and gently sat beside her. And rather than saying, you're being entitled, you're being spoiled, you can go without, Kylie sat down and said, you're obviously upset. I wonder if there's a way that you can communicate it so that I can understand, so I can help you. And this is the whole purpose of discipline, right? When we teach our kids, when we guide them, we get much better results. And you've asked these really careful questions. How can we do this? You didn't tell her, you asked her. And, and that, was, that was the most masterful part of all of this. You didn't say, you need to do this. You need to tell me. You need to be grateful. You need to blah, blah, blah. You said, what do we need to do so that? How can we? What might be better? Do you know what I mean? Like there was a gentle questioning that went through that. That, that interaction that really made it work. I, I think that it's worth going back and listening again. If you listen to the podcast, go back and listen again to the details of the conversation Kylie shared because it's really smart parenting. After the break, we'll find out my I'll do better tomorrow and how I can uh, try to be a better dad, especially at night time with kids that are needing some assistance. Get curious, not furious. Be where your feet are. Mistakes lead to mastery. High emotions, low intelligence. Have you ever heard these or any of the other principles I share and thought, I need to stick that on my wall? Well, now you can. The Happy Family team has pulled out the best Justinisms for A5 mini posters. Perfect for your home or even the classroom and easy to grab at happyfamilies.com.au. It's the Happy Families podcast, the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. I'm curious. Justin, you haven't been around for bedtimes for a, a fair bit oh, of our time. So. I know, I know. So for those of you who are wondering why I haven't been around, I've started travelling again. Plus, we're still without a home and I've been up and down the coast and it's been it's been a little bit challenging to have really good quality night times with the kids. Uh, but Hamish Blake, you know, we talk about Hamish every now and again on the podcast. Every so often we'll even play something that he said and today we're going to do the same thing because Hamish Blake... He's not a parenting expert, he's a comedian, but he's becoming my inspiration for dad goals. They're competitive four and seven. Yeah. And it's like, well, you know, like my daughter, especially if I'm, you know, if she hears me saying to my boy, like, you know, I love you, you know, with my whole heart. And mm. that's, you don't ever have to do anything to earn that love, you know, at night time, mm. say the same thing every night. So I'm like, I love you just because of you. I love you. Mm. If she's feeling a bit competitive, you know, she'll roll her eyes and be like, well, then I guess you don't love me then. And you're like, oh, here we go. Okay. She's amazing. <laughs> so I'll be like, no, Rue, but I love you with my heart. She goes, so then you don't love Sonny. 
Wow. And like and I'm having these conversations at home at the and moment. So, so. so you like it forces you to it's like lots of parenting stuff like, okay, what do I th- how do I explain this to the kids? Be like, I have sunny love that only he that's for him because it's of who he is and no one else can have it. I've never asked you who you love more out of Sunny and Rudy. I'll tell you off air because it can get it can be a spicy <laughs> topic. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then you're like, and then you, that's how I try and explain to them. It's like, mm. and I have really love that no one else can have because that's for you. And that's mm. yours and, and no and, and no matter what else I love or who else I love, they can't ever take mm. away what we have. Mm. And it's the same thing. It's the same. But it's from, a, you know, that just shows me from the, the time you're a baby, mm. that's how human brains work to be like, uh-oh, uh, I love the love. I need this love. I need this connection that we have between each other. And mm. um, it's a primal fear we have that if someone, if it, you see it going to someone else, maybe there's mm. less for me. I love this excerpt from Hamish's podcast. I love the way that he's in there with his kids and he's got this routine with them. He's got these things that he says to them every night and he's got this this pattern of engaging with them at bedtime. I used to do this. The last three or four months, I've barely been with the family because of all the ups and downs of the move and the distance and so on. But He's re-inspired me. And my I'll do better tomorrow is to be more like that. Back in the day, back before we went through all the stuff that we're going through, I used to put the kids into bed. I used to read them a story. I used to sing them three, four, maybe even five songs. We used to have cuddles and tickles and bouncies on the bed. We used to do all that sort of stuff, especially when they were little. But over the last little while, none of those things happen. It's more like I open up the door, say goodnight, maybe go, give them a kiss on the forehead and walk back out. And Hamish Blake, you're my inspiration. Uh, I'm I'm in, I'm inspired by that. It's just so so good. It's interesting because we've obviously done this pretty big move, and we've acknowledged a few weeks ago that we've done a major downsize. Yeah. When we left Brisbane and we've been living in this little Airbnb, I sat down with the kids while you were still in Brisbane, you know, working, and I just said to them, I said, "We've we've lived in a beautiful house, and there are things that we love about it, and there are things that probably didn't work so well for us." I said, "What things would you like to?" to keep if we're you know as we're looking for our next home what things do you want to keep and what things would you change do you know what their number one thing is that they wanted to change yeah what's that in our in our house in brisbane we had a parents retreat for all intents and purposes we were at one end of the house and the kids were at the other end of the house which is fantastic it's a wonderful <laughs> especially as they get older But what I have noticed is over the years that we've lived there, and especially as they've gotten older and more independent, it's very easy to kind of just call from the hallway. Good night, kids. And say, good night, everybody, and kind of head to bed. That was the number one thing they wanted to change. They were like, when we find our next house, we want to be closer to you. Yep. It's so amazing to me that kids who have such a strong desire for independence still crave closeness. Yeah, yeah. And so I just love that in our downsize... (laughs) We've listened (laughs) because it's only three bedrooms and they're close together. (laughs) We could all literally lie in our bedrooms and call out and we'd all hear each other. Well, the take-home message from today's podcast to help you to do better tomorrow is, number one, from Kylie, uh, take the time out to sit down, listen, and gently guide rather than tell kids through their tough times. And from me, uh, that bedtime routine, having that consistent, predictable routine where you say all the right things and you do all the right things so the kids feel security and they feel love. I, I just, I think it's... Well, most important, they feel connected. They feel connected. Yeah, yeah. And and don't just sing out down the highway, hallway. Good night, kids. Sing out down the highway. So don't sing out down the hallway. Good night, <laughs> kids. And, and, and don't, and, and miss out on that connection. It's so critical to get it. We really hope that this I'll Do Better Tomorrow has inspired better parenting in your family. Good luck for the weekend. And um, we can't wait to be with you again on Monday for more of the Happy Families podcast. We're, uh, we're, we're back, by the way, on Monday with a listener question from Lydia who wants to know how to support kids kids to be more assertive with their peers? How do we help kids to get their way every now and again instead of being pushovers and being influenced by all the other kids around them? That's what we're talking about on Monday. And then I'm so excited for this. On Tuesday and Wednesday, we're talking all about vaping. It's going to be a really big week on the podcast. Can't wait to get into it. The Happy Families Podcast is, as always, produced by Justin Ruland from Bridge Media. Craig Bruce is our executive producer. And more info for all of the things that we're talking about is available at happyfamilies.com.au. Listener.